emotions for this final season um, were all over the place in 2018. I would have to say, you know, you go into it thinking, okay, we're going to make some changes. You know, we're going to work on this a little bit. It's the last year. Not changed too much, but definitely going to make some changes. And um, they weren't clicking for me, and I was not used to that. I'm definitely, uh, I feel like I've, I've learned my hurdles, and I know my hurdles. Um, but with the changes that we added to the program, my body wasn't agreeing to it. Uh, the weights were a little too much. I just don't do weights like that. Um, these knees just don't quite agree with that from knee surgeries and stuff. But um, what I told myself was, how about you have fun though? This is your last season and you're putting pressure on yourself like you have something to prove. And my agent Emmanuel will always tell me, you've proven everything there is to prove. How about you enjoy it? Because I'm someone that's definitely on to the next, on to the next, you know, what's the next competition I want to win at all. And um, going into the last race, you know, I actually made a big change and I went back to my coach, Bobby Kersey. And I remember even when we called Nike and stuff, they were, okay, we're doing this. And I said, listen, this is the last, you know, shebang for a Diamond League trophy. Let's go for it. And the crazy thing is, I, no one knows this part of it. I was, and I didn't really realize, I was pregnant at the last race. And before training with Bobby, training was going great. And then I, oh, the week before, it just all went away. And any woman that's been pregnant, you know you don't want to eat anymore, you feel sick, you're sleepy all the time. And so that played a lot into my emotions um, in the interview after the race because I was so, like, this is such a blessing, you know, to be uh, going into the next phase of my life of what I've wanted. But, oh, my God, I just lost, and I lost that way. So it was just a lot going on. And I think because you had spent all of the 2018 season telling everybody, yes, folks, I am out of here. I'm ready to be a mother. I'm ready to have kids. Nobody was surprised when literally at the end of the season, you're already pregnant. How did I find out <laughs> that I was pregnant? That was uh, quite interesting because I am someone, as track and field, you know your body in and out. You know everything about your body. And so I'm, I'm someone that's throughout my career play, paid very close attention um, to the details. And I just remember I literally woke up one morning and I was packing up because, you know, I'm going to move back home to Illinois. And I had this moment where I freaked out and was like, oh my gosh, I don't have any acne because I will break out with acne and I have no cramps. I'm pregnant. It just has to be. There's just no possible way. And so I went and I bought like four tests because one test couldn't be true and two tests couldn't be true. And so four tests and I finally said, I think it's real since four of them have told me this is true. And uh, I called my husband because he was in Illinois and he's on FaceTime and I just pulled the tests up and he just, his face dropped and all he could say was, for real? And I was like, are you happy? Like we planned this. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But for real. So he sat in that moment for a while and we sat there for a while just in shock and disbelief. One phase into the next, I would definitely have to say um, being pregnant right away to me, it truly was what I wanted. If I could have written the way that my script of my life would have gone, this portion of it, this is exactly what I would have wanted to happen. Um, because my husband put it, you know, when I was being sick, you know, through the first trimester, I'm like, babe, this is just terrible. Oh my goodness. And he's like, yeah. He's like, but well, babe, think of it like this because there's another opportunity. There was a TV show that I could have possibly done, but because I was pregnant, I couldn't. And so I was, you know, mixed up in all my emotions. And my husband said, I promise you, if it would have been a year from now and we were still trying, you would have cared less about that TV show and you would have been saying, what's wrong? Will we be able to have kids? When he said that, I said, okay, Dawn, you know, maybe you're being a little selfish. So for me, for sure, this is exactly how I want it to go. Something that a young hurdler could learn that's hungry and is willing to make the sacrifices is that if you have done your research, and I say this all the time, and you think you have a really good idea of what it takes, don't let anyone else tell you that you can't. And I know people have heard that before, but I mean, day in and day out, like you said, I was fourth best in my camp. Every single day I was faced with the reality of, if the Olympic trials was today, I'm not making the team. That's not the world, that's just in the US. And so I had to constantly tell myself, it's okay that they're dressed in their all beautiful Nike, you know, new gear that they popped the tags on this morning and their new spikes with their names on them. It was a constant reminder of, if this is where you want to be, this is actually where you want to be because you want to race the best in the world and the three are in your camp. And so I would tell them, it's going to be a battle. Accept it, cry when you need to cry, find your support system, but you have to suck it up. And when you step onto the track, that is your domain. You own that track for that day. And anytime you can get closer and closer to your competition, you do that. You take those chances. 
and you take them out whenever you can. Being trained by Bobby Kersey, he was very, very big on understanding the bigger picture. And our goal was always whatever championship it was for that year. USA Nationals, top three, when you get to world champs or the Olympics, it's about the top of the podium. That's what we care about because we're, we're the best in the world. You know, that's what we truly believe. And I will say no, year after year, being trained like that, when you believe that you're the best in the world, once I go to these, um, as you put them, regular season races, Diamond League races, to me, they're just prepping me for the big show. And so I'm telling myself to prove to myself, you need to win this race. So when you get to the Olympics, you get to the World Championships, now it's literally you just racing yourself. You have taken the competition out like 10 times by now. So yes, they're ready to go, but they thought they were ready to go at the other Diamond League races, but you know you're ready to go now. And so each race though, you know, I always use it as a learning tool. Um, but by the time you get to the Diamond League final, that's typically after um, a World Championships. And by then, I know my condition has kicked in. And so I really just have no worries. And it's really just like, let's have fun with this as I collect my first, second, third, and fourth Diamond League trophy. Already I'm uh, missing it. I've seen, you know, people saying, oh, I'm starting up training. Not really missing that part. But what I'm going to miss most about track and field is that feeling of your training has been going so well, and this could be my race to PR. This could be my race to run better. You know, you, like you run that race where you feel like all cylinders are clicking and you cross the line and you're not even worried about the competition, you just look at the clock. That feeling, that's what I'm really gonna miss of. That was a sweet race. I just love that feeling. I always say hurdles is like poetry in motion to me. Now you and your uh, husband had a pretty awesome Instagram video revealing the fact that you were pregnant. Um, whose idea was that and how, how much help did you have actually shooting it? Uh, the idea of I Reveal um, was definitely, it was a collab. I knew we didn't want to do something simple of just, you know, posting a picture of a sonogram. Um, but Alonzo, okay, you think, you can think I'm a lot, but that man is extra. And so it's just a blessing that I'm a wife that like, let's go along. But he really wanted, he has so many ideas. We cut back because I was like, sweetie, listen, we're not doing a movie about a reveal. We're just not. I'm not on board with that. And so we did, we, have our, we had our videographer back home um, come with us and follow us around. And he had to edit out a lot. We did so much for that video. I know, but the people loved it. Um, and so it was really, really fun. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna do more to it. People are already requesting more. Okay, so that was the reveal <laughs> that you were pregnant. What is the gender reveal going to look like? So big surprise for the gender reveal. We're gonna wait until the day of. I see your face changing. Who Otto. are you? We are people and of suspense. And what have you done with Don Arbor right. We are people of suspense. No, um, I know, I, because, okay, I talked to a good friend. Think of it like this, and he had a really good point. And he said, so many things in our lives we always wanna plan for, and you try and plan ahead. In track and field, that's all you do. I mean, that's all you really do. But he said, there's no way on the day that you have your child, they're going to say, it's a, uh, and you're going to be like, really? You know, he's like, there's no way you're going to be disappointed. And so he's like, just have that moment of it's a girl or a boy. Because right now, yeah, I'm like, oh, a boy, but you know, a healthy baby. And nowadays it's a lot of neutral, beautiful colors. Just stay away from the pinks and the really soft purples. 